Helm is making your DevOps process slow. It has definitely made my life really difficult. Whoa, saying that out loud felt kind of good. I mean, it started off great. We went on a few dates, did a couple of POCs. We actually had a good time. But now that we've decided to go all in, things have changed. Helm, it's no longer fun. Sounds relatable? Awesome. Because today we're going to look at why you should ditch Helm in favor of Kubella and the open application model. Let's start with this. Helm is probably the best package manager for Kubernetes. No, seriously, as with most package managers out there, Helm is still the best tool to install third-party applications. Now that we've got the pleasantries out of the way, it's time to complain. Hmm, where should I even begin? I mean, I could start with the fact that Helm's templating engine isn't really typed, so the tiniest of typos causes the entire thing to break. Or maybe I can talk about the lack of drift correction. I mean, anyone with the right access can accidentally change or worse, delete stuff. How do you fix that? And don't even get me started on Helm hooks. Just why? Why do you even exist? Hmm. All right. Let's go through all the noise and talk about the biggest issue with Helm, which has kind of forced me to look for an alternative. I should have probably started with this. Hmm. We use Helm and Kubernetes to deploy microservices. In your initial days, you can probably deploy all your microservices using a single Helm chart. That would suffice. But as each microservice evolves and optimizes itself for different patterns, you'll notice your Helm charts start to deviate. For example, maybe not every application is long running, so maybe you need to start using jobs. Or maybe the horizontal pod autoscaler is not enough and you want to use Kada for your event-driven services. Lastly, you might have applications which are pure event consumers and don't really need to run within the service mesh you have set up. All these nuances warrant the creation of customized Helm chart which you would have to maintain. Now, if you want everything to be consolidated in a single Helm chart, You'll have to set up a dozen flags in your values and write convoluted if-else logic in your templates. Not cool. In short, Helm doesn't really provide a plug-and-play mechanism for building your application manifest. And as your microservice architecture matures, you really need something way more modular than Helm. So let's begin with this point. As discussed, we need something modular. Something we can plug and play. We need something that allows us to start small, like using just a Kubernetes service and a deployment, and then expand into something more advanced, like using probes and autoscaler, or maybe even a service mesh. And most importantly, we should be able to switch out parts of the manifest, like the autoscaler being used, without having to break existing applications. In other words, we want Legos. We want Legos for Kubernetes. But you know what's better than Legos? A quick like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. All right then, it's time to introduce the open application model. Its main objective is to become a platform agnostic application specification language. Wow, that's a mouthful. Basically, it wants to be the format that you can use to deploy your applications on Kubernetes or even on something like AWS Lambda. But I don't really care about that. I am a Kubernetes guy. So we'll focus on Kubella which is an implementation of the open application model for Kubernetes. Now, before I screw up this introduction any further, let's dive right in. This is how you define an application in Kubevela. It's just a custom resource called application. As you can notice, an application is basically composed of several components, which may have multiple traits. Components and traits are the Lego blocks, which will help us build an application manifest. As you can see here, I have one packing component for my application with a scalar trait to define the number of replicas. Do note that there's absolutely no reference to Kubernetes resources like a service or a deployment. That's a good thing. Applying this custom resource will produce an output like this. As you can see, it has created a deployment object using the image I have provided. It has also set the replica count to three and has created a service object for us. How cool is that? So how did this work? Well, the answer to that lies within the definition of the backing component and the scalar trait. This is what the template for the backing component looks like. I know it's a bit scary, especially because it's written in the Q language, but bear with me. 
As you can see, we are creating a Kubernetes deployment object in the output along with a service object. We also define type parameters which we can use in our templates. That's pretty much it. Now if we head over to the definition of the scalar trait, we have something similar. Here we are essentially patching the replicas field in the deployment object we had made in the backend component. So you see how all of this works, right? The component defines the various objects we want to create and traits are a mechanism to augment them as and when needed. Let's take one more example to bring all of this home. Let's replace the scalar trait with the CPU scalar. Well, the output of this app will be similar to the one we saw earlier, except that we'll have no replicas field defined in our deployment anymore. Also, we have a new HPA resource created for us. Pretty neat, right? Now, if we look at the CPU scalar trait, we'll see that it's the one responsible to create the HPA object. In other words, traits not only patch or modify outputs created by components, they can also create new objects altogether. Now for the final showdown. Let's say you don't want to auto scale based on the CPU. Maybe you want to scale based on a cron schedule using Kader. No problem. Just swap out the CPU scalar trait with the cron scalar and that's it. All other application using the CPU scalar wouldn't be affected by this at all. They would continue running just as they always did. Just remember, all these components and traits that we're using need to be defined somewhere. Luckily for us, there's an overwhelming list of add-ons for all the popular Kubernetes companions out there, so you probably wouldn't need to write or define any component or trait whatsoever. And it doesn't end here. Google has got a great workflow system with surprisingly good support for progressive delivery and multi-cluster deployments. You can even deploy cloud infrastructure using this tool. So in theory, I can spin up all my applications dependencies, including things like a database directly from Kubella. How insane is that? According to me, Kubella could be a really interesting step towards platform engineering. Oh, you don't know what that is? Well, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on platform engineering. Until then, you should absolutely check out this video to understand what GitOps really is and how you can get started with it today. Like, share, and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bot here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.